Good morning. Take your time to pick a seat. Um, I've just returned from a conference in Munich, which every year very happily coincides with Oktoberfest. So um, I, I'm both tired and a lucky guy. Um, but what I've learned more this year than any, any year before that, this was the seventh time I was at that conference, is that search and SEO is changing. That conference is a conference with 50 people only. Each year there is about 2,500 people who want to get to that conference and there's about five people who are able to buy a ticket. Why is it so popular? Well, because the people that were there are, for one reason or another, wildly successful. And what, what really occurred to me this year is that for everyone who was as successful as we were seven, seven eight years ago, all of our jobs are changing. SEO has gone from being a purely technical challenge to becoming a challenge that's a, about a whole lot more than just techniques. So I want to talk to you today about holistic SEO and about what that means and what, what it means that the web is evolving as quickly as it does. Google is getting better at fighting spam. All the other search engines are getting better and better at fighting spam. This means that all, every website out there slowly as, and, and in a very weird way has to get better without becoming more spammy. It used to be such that in that small room in Munich, there were 40 people that you could give a website and they would hit a couple of buttons and they'd hit the jackpot. You could rank any website for any keyword in a couple of weeks. That's no longer true. It's no longer that easy. In fact, it's, it's getting harder and harder and harder to do that. Now, those in that room are lucky. They work for the likes of Facebook, Disney, CBS. They have huge websites and a lot of people to work on those websites. So they can invest a lot of time and money to do things. But the funny part is that all of you are prob probably even more lucky than they are. Because they're dealing with old school CMSs and a lot of bullshit out there. And you are dealing with one of the best platforms that we have. This is also the problem. Now that WordPress is about 25% of the web, excellence is something that we are expecting. Websites are becoming better and better and better, and we're, we're expecting them to be. Speed, while still an issue for some right now, will in three, four, five years no longer be an issue. You can already see that the amount of resources we have available to make websites faster, and everything that an Amazon and other hosting services can do to speed things up, leads to faster websites, regardless of how crappy you code it. Good design is also no longer something that's only available to the very top end. You can buy or, or just download well-designed themes everywhere. WordPress.org has an incredibly big listing of very well-designed themes that you can just <coughs> install, ready, done. The question at that point becomes, how do I stand out? How do, what makes you better than all those other people? And no longer is that technical excellence. Technical excellence is what we're expecting. So if you're starting with a new house, you start with a good foundation. A broken foundation leads to trouble. Luckily, we have WordPress. So our foundation right now, and I can honestly say that the last few releases, we've done more and more and more on the SEO side. We've finally taken titles out of the theme space and into WordPress space. We've, we've done so many changes in WordPress core that are so good that there is no better CMS out there for SEO. And of course, there are still things that um, need to be done. There are still things that you can optimize. There are still things that I think should be included in core, like XML sitemaps. Well, luckily, there's us for that part. <laughs> 
But when you start building a site, you don't actually start building a site immediately. Like with a house, you start with a blueprint. And what we're starting to figure out more and more is that where people have trouble is not necessarily in the technical part. It's with all the other stuff. It's with how good is that product that you have? How good is, is your surface? How, what, what are you doing? What are you adding value? Luca was talking about the value you're adding. Are you asking the right, right price? Well, for a lot of stuff I'm seeing, I go like, OK, I could optimize this. But it probably won't work if your product is shit. <coughs> if your product is not good, then the, the, transpa the transparency that the web is creating is causing it to be such that your product is going to fail. So no longer can you get away with being a, a mediocre product, especially for online products. It becomes very, very e easy to see what is good and what is bad. Comparison shops and everything else have their, exist for a reason. And trust me, Volkswagen knows by now. <laughs> it's not a coincidence I'm using Tesla pictures in my presentation and not Volkswagens. The, the entire automobile industry is being, ta being taught by a new company that wasn't in there 10 years ago what marketing looks like. And they're still not listening. But this is, marketing is becoming about product more than about anything else. It's the foundation. And then you go from, okay, so I have my product. Now what's the goal of my site? What do I want to do? What do I want my website to tell people that get there? What do I want them to do on my website? If you sell Teslas, the chance of you selling a, a Tesla on that site is pretty slim. The chance of you selling an experience that makes, makes them remember Tesla forever is pretty big. So you're creating touch points. And you create touch points not on your own site, but everywhere. But you probably need a step before even that. What is it that you're optimizing for? We wrote an ebook and we've been writing loads and loads of posts recently about stuff like how to do keyword research which is basic, basic SEO. I know I came into SEO now about 10 years ago, um, walking into the office of the company I was then working for, and for the first few months, most of what I was doing was doing bloody keyword research, and I can tell you it's annoying, which is why I want to teach you so that we don't have to do it for you. <laughs> it's a lot of work. It takes a lot of time. What is my product? What, which words do people use when they search for my product? How would they describe my product? Not what, you, what name you give it. I don't care what name you, you gave your product. I care what you, people search for and how they talk about your product. It's also a question of what should you be found for. Should you, if you're a car dealership, be found for the word car? It's very easy to start doing basic keyword research and think that car is your most important keyword. Well, probably it's not. Because the chance of you ranking for car is very, very slim. The chance of you ranking for car dealer city name is a lot higher and probably would lead to much, much better results. So start with that. Start thinking about keywords. Start thinking again and again and again about, OK, what should people find me for? And then, based on that, create a good site structure. And I'll be very honest. This is the bloody basics. If you don't do this right, you're, you're never going to even compete. You're not on the playing field yet. After that, Good user, a good user experience and actually good accessibility too is expected. It's what's needed. You can't do that, sort of, that stuff badly anymore. Well, we see every day that people can, but I expect that in four or five years, the, the level of expectation of a normal user will be even higher than it is today. 
Most people don't realize when they look at their iPhones and, and, and go to a website how quickly they click away when a, when a website is poorly done. But if you see them use a website, if you do user experience studies and you, see, and you look at people using websites, it's painful. But we as website builders and owners should be working on that and making them better. Excellence really is expected. It's the least you can do. And this is only, the only thing I'm talking about so far is technical excellence and actually that's rather boring. Because once you've reached that point, and that point should be fairly easy to reach using the right themes and the right plugins and, and everything that, that's available to you at almost no cost, it comes to telling your story. And everyone has a story. So it's not just telling your story, it's how you tell that story. What are you doing that people that makes people engage with you? What are you doing that makes sure that people remember you? Now, of course, it's just not just how you tell your story. If I were doing this story in an empty room, its impact would probably be very close to zero. So you need to be where the people are that you want to reach. And in the very beginning, that is most definitely not your website. Because your website, if it's new, starts at absolutely zero. We are lucky enough to reach a lot of people through Yoast.com, but even for us, Facebook, Twitter, and other outlets are indispensable. It really is, and I can't stress the importance of this enough, important that you get these things right. If you go to Facebook, I work for some of the bigger publishers in the world. I've done work for The Guardian. For The Guardian on a regular basis now, Facebook gives them more traffic than Google does on a day-to-day -day basis. So this goes back and forth between the two of them. And luckily, they're fighting for it. So both of them are sending more and more traffic. But this happens on all big publishing platforms out there. For many, many big publishing platforms, Facebook is now more important than Google. So if you don't have a Facebook strategy, you're probably losing. The funny thing is that because of that, search is changing too. Search is happening in all sorts of different places. So search is happening in Facebook, and I pray to God that at some point they will actually fix it and make it better. But this is the most exciting change I've seen this year, is that in uh, the, the left screenshot, the top hits there, where do you think those are coming from? Most people think that's Google. It's actually not. It's Apple search. Slowly, very, very, very slowly, Apple is introducing its own search engine into its own browser and into its own operating system. In a couple of years, Google will not be the only player anymore because these guys will creep up. I've added YouTube there because recently when Google split up and, and put Alphabet on top of it, Google just increased the chance of YouTube being split off of, of Google entirely. If they don't do it themselves, I bloody hope the European Union does it sometimes. Because YouTube is the biggest search engine on the web for videos, but it's also the second biggest search engine overall. It's bigger than Bing, it's bigger than Yandex, it's bigger than Baidu, it's, it's bigger than all of those together, actually. So this is changing, and it's changing, it seems like slowly. But in a couple of years, you'll go like, oh wait, this has changed very, very rapidly. One I didn't mention here, but that's also very important and has its own trouble is Amazon. Amazon has more e-commerce queries now than Google has. If it's not on Amazon, a lot of my friends in countries that Amazon delivers to, that have, have an Amazon Prime uh, account, if they can't find it on Amazon, they just won't buy it. 
It's, it's a very rare situation, but it's a situation in which Google is slowly becoming less important. Because of that, we're changing along with it. You've seen us put more emphasis on stuff like social in our plugin. You've seen us put more emphasis on content optimization. In the end, it comes down to one thing. You need the technical excellence, and I expect you to get there in the next couple of years, because that is not the hard part. We try and make that as easy as we can for you, and of course there's other stuff you need to do. But we'll be there to help you with that. But in the end, your marketing needs you. It needs your story, and it needs you to tell that on platforms where you, where you can reach people. And the only thing people get right, get right about SEO is that they, they think about keywords and then start optimizing for them. What they forget is that you have to actually put that story out there. And I'm not talking about doing weird link building. I'm, not, I'm talking about do, putting that story out there on the platforms where your customers are. I've seen some great examples in the last few days of people that built awesome content and then used Facebook's advertising to show that content to very, very specific groups of people. It's very easy in Facebook advertising to create a group of journalists in the Netherlands that make more than 50K a year. Those are the journalists that you want to, you want to reach with an ad and make sure that they see your product if that's something you're selling to. You can even specify it by interest. You can make it car journalists or something else. So you can very, very target with really very low budget too. You can target people very specifically and make sure that they reach your content. I've seen, I've seen some examples in the last few days of people using that to do link building in much, much more effective ways than all the other ways I've seen in the last few years. Marketing is changing, and thus SEO is changing. The key word in all of this is that it needs a brand, and depending on who you are, it might be your personal brand, or if you're in the lucky position that I am in, where your company becomes big, bigger, you actually have a bit of trouble disassociating yourself from your brand. Um, you, you might have noticed we did a redesign. I took, we took my head off of every page. Um, I've, I'm not joking if I'm saying that I'm not the only one thinking that's a good idea, because we've seen that. The funny thing is our redesign cost like a 10, 15% uplift in sales, and I, what, well, it wasn't too good for my ego. I mean, <laughs> let's face it. <laughs> if your hat is that bad for sales. <laughs> it, but you need a brand. One of my best friends in that group I was with in Munich is a VP of growth at Facebook. When he first came in six years ago, he, was, he had just become a manager at Facebook and he's gone the full path from manager to VP within six years, now reporting straight to Mark Zuckerberg. That, that guy took on a responsibility for brand recently instead of specific technical stuff. Why? Because brand means more to their growth than anything else. And this wasn't something that happened to just him. This is ha something that has happened to multiple SEOs in that room. We were all SEOs seven years ago, and now most of us call ourselves, dig ourselves digital marketers. We're going wider, and probably everyone else needs to follow. The keyword is integration. Integration of all these different things. If someone is doing uh, 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 PR for your company and you're not talking to them when you're doing marketing, you're doing it wrong. These things should be combined. <coughs> that is why we call that holistic SEO, because we like the word SEO too much. We'll probably have to get rid of that at some point in the future too. You need to combine all these things. Technical, usability, PR, content, all of it has one big goal. And that big, hairy goal is making sure that people know you. 
And where they find you is irrelevant because they will probably find you several times before they buy your product. So Google search is important, but it's no longer the only important thing. If, if I can search for you in Google and then later search for you in Facebook and you're not on Facebook, then what kind of company are you? Would people trust it if you were, if you were not on Facebook at all? Well, they would if you were one of Facebook's direct competitors, but other than that, it would be very weird. So you have to be everywhere, and you have to think about SEO as much more than just, some, just a few technical trip, tricks left and right. That being said, if you have questions about those, t those, uh, those, those tricks that we pull, I'm happy to answer them now. Thank you. So, do we have any questions? Uh, how much is the new approach of Google you know, implementing SSL or sort of helping sites that help SSL to helping SEO or not? Yeah, I can. So the question is, how much is the change with Google promoting them promoting SSL, um, helping sites? Uh, the the ranking of sites. Yes. Um, the problem is, it's hard to say, because Google themselves say that if all else is is the same and you have SSL and your competitor doesn't, then you'll win. So that's what we call a tiny, tiny, tiny ranking factor. Uh, it means very, very little. At the same time, for more and more things, you actually need SSL. So to be included in, a, in a st a stuff like iOS search or Apple search, they require you to be on SSL. For more and more specific things, you will need an SSL certificate. And this leads to very peculiar problems because SSL is not always easy. Um, and for some reason, we usually most of the time still need an IP combined with one IP combined with one SSL certificate, which is kind of a problem now that in the US they've literally run out of IPs a few days ago. So there's a lot of weird stuff ha happening. I we'll see where it goes, but I think SSL is here to stay. All of HTTP2 is, is, going, is going to be SSL only for browsers. Chrome already supports it. So all of the new advancements being made in making the web faster are requiring websites to be on SSL. And SSL certificate only has to cost like 10 bucks right now. So it's, it's, the cost of that has come down a lot, which makes it a lot easier. You, you don't talk about mobile. But can you more can tell about the consequence of mobile and location based to SEO? So I honestly think that this was the year in which mobile SEO became the normal SEO. Um, I don't talk about mobile because I think mobile is expected by now. Not having, I mean, over half of search queries in Google are mobile. And of course, there are specific sites where being on, uh, where, where being on the normal websites has a definite advantage. But for more and more of these things, there is only mobile. And if you look at uh, where uh, the web is growing the most, if you look at India, if you look at Africa, if you look at the countries out there that are adding more and more users than we could ever do, that's all purely mobile. So if you look from a global perspective, there, there is the normal web is the old fashioned way of doing things and you start with mobile and then you degrade <laughs> for for the web. And of course, there's some stuff that you can do in the web right now that you can't do on mobile yet, but that's a very, very sm a small group of things, and that group of things is getting smaller every day. So I honestly, mobile SEO is pretty much the same as normal SEO with a bigger focus on speed, but that's something you should focus on anyway. And if your website isn't mobile friendly, well, shame on you, go download another theme. <laughs> It's not that hard. I mean, there's so many responsive themes out there that for WordPress, this should no longer be a problem. Uh, 
And so, in a way, with your advice to be everywhere, I kind of uh, interpret it as casting a wider net uh, to be on all services as possible as the services allow, I assume. Yeah. But I also hear advice, uh, like in recent years, to be more focused to be the social services that match your product or service. Uh, how uh, what's the balance between the two? How to like how to, in practice to make decision between like just being on everything and spreading resources like on every service possible, uh, or picking your priorities around that. Okay, so the question is which. Uh, should I be on every marketing service or should I try, uh, try and pick the most important ones? I'm repeating mostly yes. for the camera. Um, to be honest, in, in most cases, you're going to find that your customers are already at a specific service. So there's a couple of required ones in my eyes. Facebook is not something that you can, if you're in this part of Europe at least, and Facebook is required. Um, but Pinterest, for instance, might be interesting or might not be interesting depending on who your target audience is. Um, at the same time, there's tons and tons of those services out there and I would not suggest that you go, go and try to be everywhere. We don't even try to do that and we try to be global but being on every surface is a lot of work. If you've got a 100 people marketing team, then by all means go try it. But other, otherwise, don't even go there. But if, so if you're um, targeting like 16-year-olds and you're not on Instagram, then you're probably doing it wrong. If you're, ta you're targeting 35-year-olds and you're not on Instagram, there's probably not too much of a problem. So it really depends on what your target audience is and who you should reach. And in that case, well, there's, there's a lot of different services out there, but just see where they are. Talk to the customers you already have to ask them which services they use and decide based on that. I don't think you can do much more than three or four well in most cases, and even that is a stretch. I, I, I know that a lot of my SEO friends have tried to do Google Plus well, and well, that really didn't work out for the rest of the world. So. Uh, I, I, in, in the end, you'll probably end up with two or three that are very important to your business. Any more questions, or are you all so hungry that you go like, stop talking, I want lunch? How do you see the future for, for um, uh, new uh, TLDs? So how do I see the future for new TLDs, top level domains like uh, Dot .academy and, and a lot of other things? Um, well, we'll be using Yoast.academy soon, um, but not as something I want to rank with because we'll do all the ranking on Yoast.com. Um, I honestly, uh, and I keep telling people in the domain business that when they ask me, I tell them like, okay, every time you launch new top level domains, you increase the value of .com. Because the question is not whether that domain in, at some point might become valuable. Right now, people will not always recognize this. So if you, if, if you put a, a weird top level domain in an ad, I can put Yoast.com in an ad and I wouldn't need HTTP in front of that or I wouldn't need, I wouldn't need to show anything else and you'd, you'd know it's a domain name. If I put Yoast.help somewhere and I don't put HTTP in front of it, then a large proportion of people will not realize that that's a domain name. That specific issue is the entire issue with top level domains. It's become, there's so many now that nobody knows anymore uh, what to do. Who of you knows what the website of Alphabet, the new uh, Google company is? Yeah, abc.xyz. I mean, if you show that, if I show that to my parents, the, the chance that they will understand that that is a web address is very, very slim. So I don't really believe in top level domains yet. Google has already said that they won't use the keyword in the top level domain for ranking. 
Well, at the same time, it might in the future help if you have a dot .hotel because people link to you with the word hotel in the, in the anchor text all the time, which helps in Google. So there are some advantages, but I'm not a big believer yet. That answer your question? Yeah. <coughs> if there's no more questions, then thank you. Thank you.